Now for this part of the video, I want to run through a couple of examples to show you what those look like. So again here, I do not have a cover letter, I don't have a table of contents, it's just a, a business letter. Now you'll see at the top, you know, I've, I've marked on a lot of yours that you don't put the name at the top of a business letter. On this one, it's because the signature line is so far down on um, like page four or five, page five it says. So after discussion we decided that the best thing to do for a solution was allow that name to go at the top of the page. So there's some things like that that you want to take into consideration too. That if there's a rule or if there's a, a typical way that it's done but you have a reason to do it another way, try it out on me. That's a great idea. So you can see it's business letter. She spelled out the entire address here. They have identified a specific person and they start with this header. They have introductions and I can see that this is a main header and this is a subheader. They made it clear for me because introduction is all caps in bold and the subheader is um, this regular caps um, still in bold. Plan is the next section. So their major sections here are introduction, plan, and probably conclusion. And the minor headings are all these others. Project abstract, statement of need, program description, all of that stuff. It's a specific piece of equipment. So it's Kurzweil 3000 assistive reading technology. Uh, goals and objectives for the plan, a timeline, a budget, evaluation, staff members, all of those are included. So how many subsections did they have here or did they meet the six section requirement since they only had three? Well yes they did because these subsections count. So we've got one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So they have eleven sections with content in them. No, perfectly done. It's, it's well done. So a real quick look um, by starting off and saying exactly what they're looking for in the very beginning. Orchard Middle School is pleased to present this proposal for your review. We look forward to partnering with you to provide a reading intervention program for our students with poor reading skills called Read to Succeed. That's it. I know exactly what they're asking for in the very first two sentences. So try to take a clue from this. Excellent, excellent overview. Let's see what else we can point out here. Again, great details. And I will make this available to you to download if you want to look through it and get some ideas. Uh, there's some great ideas here when we talk about uh, citations. I may come back and revisit this because these are some good citations that support claims that they're making in this document. Some objectives that are numbered. We have a timeline. And writing all of this out in a paragraph would have really been confusing and long, but putting it in a table, what a nice way to be able to look through the expected progress of the project. And the same goes for the budget. They have an overview kind of thing and then an itemization in a table. And this works really well for items like this. They want uh, Epson 300 scanners at $300 each and they want five of them at $1,500. So that would be a hard thing to write up in a paragraph but it's so easily presented in a table. They also chose to put their staff in a table. They're looking for three staff members as having primary responsibility for the progress of the project. So they put their names to the left and then a description of their qualifications to the right of that. So well done. And then once again we have a very brief conclusion and it includes a way to contact them directly. Please give me a call and we expect to hear about the acceptance of our grant request by December 2016 if, 2016 if we are to meet our project deadlines. That is an excellent finish to a good proposal. 
and then there are their five actually they came up with six um, references citations all right I'm going to show you one other one and this is actually something I actually did in the workplace I wrote this I it looks like November of 2016 and it's written in memorandum style why because this is internal I don't have to do addresses and all that I am writing to the CEO and president of the company that I work for and this is a proposal for us to pursue ISO 9001 2015 certification so I start off the purpose of this memo is to propose the pursuit of this certification here at CAPS first sentence it's out there you know exactly what I'm proposing before I launch into all the descriptions so in this one I have larger font they're not all caps in this one but a slightly smaller font so I can tell just by looking that this is a main header introduction and the statement of purpose is a subheader very good as long as I can tell this will work I have business case I have some benefits I have the plan with objectives and methods now when I'm counting I don't count plan because there is no paragraph there right? there is no content but I will count objectives and methods then I have a timetable and you can see that listed out here I have the personnel identified uh, their role their name and what their role in this team is what I need them to do I also included cost and budget it was not huge twenty thousand dollars most of which went for consulting fees and then I outlined my expected results because I am presenting to somebody that I know and I understand my audience pretty well I know what they're looking for I had to come out with these items that show what it is that we are doing that is going to have a positive impact on our business why we should even pursue this and then I've got the conclusion and I did not I don't think put a timeline in here but again this was an internal document and I was pretty much interacting with these guys on a regular basis and then I only have one no nope, I have five um, references in the document so to tell you again this was this was real I really used this and it uh, worked we are still in pursuit of that our timeline is slipped a little bit because we got some unexpected business come our way but it is the kind of document you will find in the workplace so I hope all of that will help you when you're trying to decide number one whether to pursue the original default project which is to write a grant proposal or number two whether to come up with something on your own either in the workplace in your life in your school or in your community something along those lines if you want to do that I encourage you to do that you will learn so much more about this process and what it can do for you if you engage in something that at least feels real if it is not in fact real Good luck. Talk to you again soon.